Hello and welcome to episode 141 of the Mouse Makes Knitting Podcast where once again I am suffering lighting challenges. This week though it's because it's early in the morning and so sun is kind of here and shining down on some very white walls that my husband has just repainted which is reflecting the light back up and making it difficult. I might turn it, I'm going to turn the top light on. Wait there. Don't go anywhere. Sorry. Is this better? Maybe a little bit. Okay. Let's start with information about the knit-alongs. In the Mouse's Makes Ravelry page there is a thread for a breezeway make-along and a thread for a yarn show make-along. I have to think about this. Both of those are open until the 31st of August. The breezeway is literally just for the breezeway tea by Fogbound Knits which I'm failing to knit at the moment. The other is for anything that you're making pardon me, and planning to wear to a yarn show. So it can be socks, cowl, sweater, shawl, hat, whatever. Um, there will be a pattern prize for those two. They're really, really just for fun. However, on the 1st of July, there will be a new thread open for... Let me get this right. The Christmas in July make along. I'm going to open a thread for you to chatter. I think I said I would do it last weekend and I forgot. I'm going to do it today. And then come the 1st of July, there will be an entry thread. So you don't have to finish. Whips are allowed. It runs from the 1st to the 31st of July, but it must be Christmassy. So the colour the name of the design, the theme of the design has got to be Christmassy in some way, shape or form. Um, for that, there is a prize of a sock set advent. So four full skeins, four mini skeins. Um, but obviously you won't receive that prize until probably October, November can hashtag it. I'm trying to remember. Why don't I just get the notes I wrote? I gave you the hashtag last week and it is mouses.xmas.in.july all lowercase. If you can't use Instagram, that's for Instagram obviously, or Ravelry, you can email me your entries at mousesmakes at gmail.com. I think that's everything I had to tell you about that. The other thing I must tell you, if you saw last week's uh, podcast, I received a, a message in the middle of filming it that caused me some concern. So what I saw flash up across my screen was a message from my husband saying, going to be late home in... The emergency room. So I immediately leapt to he's fallen off his motorcycle but in actual fact he just had an injury at work and had gone there to have the wound cleaned and dressed see if he needed stitches and get two courses of antibiotics. So yes Dave has had many antibiotics this year Hopefully he won't need them for anything else. He's fine. It's fine. It was sore that day because they cleaned it. Um, it was a bit sore the next day. It was very swollen. It's absolutely fine now. Okay. What else? I was going to show you some needles last week that I didn't get round to because I wanted to ring him to see what the message was about. So I'll show you those later. And I will give you a poppy update. Um, I'll leave that till the end because I've got a little bit of video for you. And if I try and insert video 
during the the rest of it it throws the sound out so I'm not going to do that I'm going to put it on at the end because otherwise my mouth moves and the words don't match up with it and when that happens it drives me absolutely balmy and I expect it will do for other people so I'm not going to do that right then an update on project bed sock project bed sock is um it was originally six pairs of socks that I'm making for a friend of Dave's who's asked me if I could make them as a surprise for his wife. Originally it was six pairs, but he wants them next week, so now it's four pairs. I have finished pair number three. This is a very simple vanilla sock uh, knit on a 2.75 millimeter needle using 68 stitches, do not panic, I have measurements and using my emerald variegated from the birthstone collection yarn. So that's those, they are done. Pair number four, each pair has been slightly different. I've done a, using the Tin Can Knits Rye Light pattern, Rye pattern, I beg your pardon. I did a DK pair, then I did a fingering weight pair, then I did the plain pair, and so I wanted to do something different for, sorry, zip, for pair number four. And I started doing something that I very quickly regretted. So I began doing a broken rib, which is great. Nice and stretchy, but boy, did I get tired of that fast. So the foot is plain stocking stitch. I don't think she'll mind. Not only did I get bored of doing it, but I felt that the inside looked better than the outside. So this was the original outside. Just looks like rib. And this is the inside. So I knit the leg, then I turned it inside out and progressed with the heel and the foot with the leg inside out. I know. I just make things harder for myself, don't I? I don't know why. So half of pair number four is finished and I have last night completed the leg on the second sock flipped it inside out and my mission today, today's Tuesday, I'm recording this on Tuesday, is to um, knit the heel flap, turn the heel, just get the first couple of rows going on the foot. What I'm doing is I'm trying to break it down into sections per day. So leg, heel, half foot, rest of the foot and toe. Then I can block them. They should be finished, using that method, they should be finished on Friday. So I can block them Friday over the weekend and get them into the post next week. The urgency is, the gentleman who has asked for them lives abroad, but he will be in the UK next week. So to avoid them getting lost in international post, um, I'm posting them to the address that he's staying at. It's family, so it's okay. Um, next week. And then bro Project Bedsock will be over and I will learn to say no. All my friends have been giving me grief because I say to everyone else, just say no. No is a complete sentence. You don't have to give reasons or excuses. You just say no. Do I take my own advice? Ironically, no. I'm just going to have a little drink. I've almost got rid of that virus that Dave gave me. Thanks, Dave. But I'm still just a little bit. Okay. Project bed sock. I feel like I'm rushing again. It's only 10 minutes. Calm down, Mandy. There's plenty of time. Project Bedsock has eaten into my knitting time quite significantly. 
especially with this last pair. I'm fully over knitting these socks. Green is probably my very favourite colour and I'm not even enjoying the fact that they're green anymore. These I did. Pair number three I really liked. I love the way the yarn came out. It was, what's the word I'm looking for? Not interesting, pleasurable I suppose to knit and watch the yarn. This pair, not so much. I should have just done a plain vanilla sock and I might even have had them finished by now, but no, I had to try and be fancy. So the two projects that I pulled out of my jar last week have not had as much progress as I would have liked, but they're still a reasonable amount, I would say. This is the Salt Marsh Cove, I believe, by Fogbound Knits. I do like Fogbound Knits patterns. And I'm knitting it in James C. Brett shh, in the colour 01, which is a very loud rainbow yarny. No, rainbowy yarn is what I was trying to say. If you can hear creaking, that's you, and he's just gone up have his shower. Okay, the little marker there is where it was when I pulled it out and I've done just that little bit. Not really as much as I would have liked but some at least. Um, I probably don't need this now until the autumn so there's no great rush. But I would have liked to have got, I think last week I'd managed about that much. I would have liked to have done an equivalent amount, but never mind. Now there's a buzzy thing. Did you hear that? I'm not afraid of them, but it's going to annoy me because it's noisy. Yes, so a very small of amount, amount of progress on this one, unfortunately. This will now go back into... Go on, just find your way back out the door, would you? Oh, I think he's gone. There you go a guest star on today's podcast. Um, completely lost what I was saying now. This will now go back onto the um, shelf of shame and wait for it to be pulled out again. Who knows when? That was that was the, the least work I got done, I suppose. The other um, project I pulled out was the Treasure Trove Wrap by Stephen West. And this, I'll be honest, my preference has... Oh, he's back. My preference has been to work on this because I just enjoy it so much. And I have actually done quite a bit. Try and put that down. I, I don't know how well this is going to come out, but I have started striping in the second colour. So I think you can see, because it's a, a bit darker, where it's going in. That's exciting. I'd hope to get the first colour finished, but I've still got this little bit left, which is probably enough mm, for maybe two more repeats. So as you're alternating them, that would be another four repeats, and I can't push it that far. Where's my, t my thing? Um, that little B, that's how much I've got done. B is marking my progress. So I've doubled the length, really. Flip over B. There you go. Oh, more than doubled. Like the one that has visited us, it's not very helpful today. So, yeah. It's that long now. Oh, I do love it. I do love in. I love working on it. 
I love the colours. These are my own yarns. This one is a bit of a mystery. I have no idea what it is. It was obviously an experiment for something that I discarded and I don't know why because it's really pretty. Um, I've looked through my notes. I can't find any reference to how I dyed it. But I, I want to try and dye it again. So I'm probably going to have to do some experiments. I think I know. I think I know what it is, but it's the amount. But anyway. Um, the second one, the darker one that you can see going in there, which is uh, this one. Is June Roses and it's probably not coming out anywhere near like it is, but it's a much more uh, bluey pink, almost a lavender really. So that's going in now. And I've sadly now got to put this away until it gets pulled out again, which is a real shame. But never mind. There will eventually be five yarns in this and I have the others caked up ready to go. So these are the next three. Let me balance them. So basically it's going to get darker as it goes on. quite excited to get bed, Project Bedsock finished because I can cast something else on then. I'm planning on casting some more stuff next month, obviously for Christmas in July. At the moment it's two sweaters and a pair of socks. Possibly a cowl. But I don't think I can manage to get four things finished before the end of the month. Possibly two. Although, maybe three. If I cheat and don't just do what comes out of my... Oh, I could. I've, I've just thought of a way I, I can cheat. We'll see. It's... What's the date today? It's the 18th as I'm recording this, doesn't give me much time, unless I cheat. It's only my rules, so I could, couldn't I? Mm. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. Shall we draw for the next two projects? Whoops, come on. Now, if the knitting gods are on my side, the ones that I'm thinking of that I could finish quickly will come out. We'll have to see, won't we? Right. The system is orange, they're blankets. I'm not going to pull one of those. Yellow, they are all old whips that have come over from last year. Blue are categories. So all the T's are on one. All the socks are on one. Then if I pull a blue and a yellow, I get an old whip to work on and potentially a new whip. But also could be an old whip. Are you following this? And I'm going to try again today to get my friend whose name begins with A to choose which off the list it's going to be. That did not work very well last week. It didn't work very well asking Ewan either. And Ewan's in the shower, so I can't ask him today. Right, I'm pulling this one and this one. Let's poke those back in so I don't confuse myself. Right, let's see. What old whip is it? Are the knitting gods on my side? They are not. <laughs> it's my Sonnenstunden cardigan, which is quite possibly now called the Sunshine cardigan, just to confuse matters. That's okay. Ah, 
maybe they are a bit on my side because the old whips are socks. Now, the plan was that I would take out the category colourway, colour, and then choose one off it. I'm going to do that, but it's quite possible that I will finish that, so I will then do another one. So there are three pairs of socks on here, brought over from last year. They're the ones I'm calling my witching hour socks. A pair that I'm calling my colour block socks, that's not their proper name. I think the name of the pattern is Colour Palette. I'm sure it's the Colour Palette socks, we'll have a look in a minute. And the other one is Scattering Petals, and that's one by uh, Dana Ray Makes. I'm going to get these projects out. I'll be back in a second. I'm back. Oh, right, let's look at the socks first. This pair are in. I've just remembered, somebody asked me, could I do like a, a, an extra video on me showing all my project bags? <laughs> Nobody has that much time. So what I'm gonna do is show you them I've only just remembered this as I go. So this one came from the lovely Hannah at Hannah's Happy Space. Um, she's taking a little break from podcasting and from her shop at the moment. But when she comes back, I highly recommend. Uh, she makes beautiful bags. This, I think... I can't remember if this is a medium or a large, but it's perfect for smaller projects. And it has a, it's got handles, but it's also got the drawstring. So it's kind of expandable. Right, this is a pattern by Dana Ray Makes. It is very squashed. They're called the Scattering Petal Socks and the pattern has instructions for DK or fingering weight. I am making fingering weight and I'm making them, if I remember rightly, out of various odds and ends. Um, and I'm making them two at a time and I seem to have got as far as turning the heel and then stop making them for whatever reason. So, I don't know that you're seeing this terribly well. If I turn you around a bit like that. Oh, that's better, look. So these are all scraps. Um, mostly Ducky Darlings, I think. I know this one is. That's Lamb Lotto. The one above it is Brew. I think this green is from Diane at U Tree Yarncraft. The others, I think, can't swear to it, but I think we're in a Misfit mini set from Hayley at Ducky Darlings. And this one, so basically the yarn I'm using for heel toes and cuffs was, if I remember rightly, some leftovers of my own hand dyed that I dyed up for, what's it called? Vertices Unite by Stephen West. So I've got quite far with these, haven't I? I'm a little bit, I wonder if I stop knitting them because it's not very, It might be that I stopped knitting them because when I was having uh, so many problems with my heart, my ankles were swelling. It may have been I stopped knitting them because I didn't think they were going to fit. That should be okay now. So yeah, there are two. They are both at the same um, stage. So they should be finished pretty quickly shouldn't they 
I think I could probably finish those in a couple of days. Let's tuck them back into their bag. This, get back in there, this is a Needle Cozy from Bertie and Poppet, I believe. Yes, Bertie and Poppet. I suspect I'm going to find all sorts of things in these bags from last year that I'd forgotten I'd got or have been looking for. No, there's nothing in there that I didn't know about. Oh wait, there's a needle. That's the needle that I used when I um, cast on the, what's it called, cuff. All sorts of things in there. Yeah, there's no labels. That one says it's Lamb Lotto, but it's not. That is not Lamb Lotto, but I think it is Ducky Darlings. This, however, is Lamb Lotto. So I don't know. I don't know. But I know they were beautiful and all beautiful colours and I wanted them to be shown off somehow. Though I am now rather regretting I didn't make fingerless mitts like that rather than socks. So it's not too late to change. Okay. In this bag. That my friend Sally bought me from the Southern Wool Show. It is by Be Busy Bees and I've got, I've just realised, I've got a little poppy cat hanging on it and a mouse and the bag has on it a mouse. In here are the socks that I couldn't remember the name of but they're not the ones that I thought they were. These are the colour palette socks. Oh, they are the ones I thought they were. And they're by Laurel Knits. I want to say it's a free pattern, but I might be wrong, so don't take my word on it. And again, these are left over from last year. These were, I cast them on sort of autumn time I appear to only have one and I've stopped it at almost exactly the same place look these I'm knitting in the orange is Cascade Heritage and I think it's pumpkin let me see it is pumpkin are you amazed at my ability to remember this stuff because I am, I can't remember what I had yesterday to eat for dinner, but I can remember this. Clearly my brain only stores important information. Yes, this is Pumpkin, which is 5646, Cascade Heritage. And the black and white stripe is my own hand dyed in fade to grey. And I'd forgotten how nicely it was striping up. I really like that. Huh. Yeah, this may take a bit longer because I only have this much of one sock. I've turned the heel, but even so, I've still got a whole leg and it looks like a long leg too. This one, I'm not so confident at getting finished quickly. I seem to have an awful lot of needles in there. gone from a 2.75 oh I know why I was knitting the leg on 2.75 and then the foot on 2.5 which I think is the prescribed needle size on the pattern because of my ankle swelling issue and because there are longer legs they come higher up my little calf 
which isn't little, it's chunky, like the rest of me. This needle holder is one that Dave made specially for me from Green Suede. It's very, very soft. I think it's my favourite one and I haven't seen it for many months. So that's that pair and there is one more pair. These are the ones that I call my witching hour socks because that's the name of the another needle in there that's the name of this yarn this was a Halloween yarn that I dyed up called witching hour and I'm using that with some limey green that I dyed up as a contrast oh this one appears to be on a nine inch and look Oh, that does look very small though. I might have to try this on. I might have to put it on the bigger needle and try it on. Yeah. Although it is the size that I normally knit my socks on, 2.25. I feel like I'm forgetting you're there and I'm just like descending into sock reverie. But yes, there is only one. There is only this one. And I'm a bit suspicious about what heel I've used as well. I think that might be a German short row, which is probably no use for me. Mm. These might end up getting pulled back and readjusted. I think I'd rather have a heel flap and gusset, especially since I'm not entirely sure what heel that is. It's not a fish lips kiss because I don't know how to do that one. It's probably a German short roll. I had a, a phase of doing those last year. So yeah, that is the witching hour and it's complimentary green. So that's just a vanilla sock. And this bag was also from my friend Sally. Um, but in a D stash, not from a show. So that's the three pairs of socks that I've pulled out that I will probably just work my way through. If I can finish them all, which is a little unlikely in the space of a week, Bearing in mind, I must get Project Bedstock finished. Um, then I freed up more spaces, haven't I? Because they are listed as separate whips in my whip list. And finally, in this bag, which is very, very beautiful soft leather that my husband made me for Christmas is the Sun and Stunden Cardi, which may now be the Sunshine Cardi. We don't know. So, let me find the picture for you. Essentially, it's the same as the Sun and Stunden or Sunshine Tea. This is getting very, very confusing. But it's knit in DK and it's cut, pardon me, a cardigan rather than a tea. Now, I have of course started this in some more James C. Brett shh, yarn. Oh, and I have more than I thought I did. Have I? Oh, I've divided for the sleeves. Wow, that's more than I thought I'd done. Let me just take this off because it's not being very helpful. Put that back on. Well, I'm going to put it on that hanger. Okay, this is the back. I need to move that marker. 
So obviously last time I pulled it out to work on, I did that much, which is quite a lot. I've divided for the sleeves, so I think it's all just plain knitting. There's no um, worrying about increases or anything now. There is a panel that runs down the side, which I don't know if you're going to be able to see. So the, the raglan moss stitch panel joins together and runs down the side of the garment, but I don't know that you can really... Oh, you can, just about, see. So, yeah, there's more of that done than I thought there was. If I can do that many inches this week, which should be quite easy, then that's well on the way to being done, isn't it? As I said, this is James C. Brett Shh, yarn again. And this one, I think, is 09. Yes. SH09. So those are all the different colours in it, what you can see. Um, this stripe here, it's not that bold in real life. On the screen, it really stands out, but it's not that obvious in real life. A bit more a bit more muted so my tummy's rumbling I'm sorry if you can hear it I am hungry that's some good stuff to get on with this week isn't it but first I must finish project bed sock right let me now very quickly show you these needles that I have bought I have bought them with my own money. I am not sponsored. I bought these from Timu. And please don't get in the comments and deliver for me lectures about buying stuff from Timu. Because I'm a grown up. This set I bought, it was about £23. I don't know what it's a rip off of, but I'm expecting something fairly expensive. And this I bought to try because it's a little unusual. There's a long needle and a short needle. And the only other needles that I've come across that are like this, and I'm struggling now to remember what they were called. They weren't Knit Pro. I think they were Addy. Addy circular sock needles, like the little nine inch... Um, but these obviously are interchangeable and they came with four different cable lengths. So there's a uh, 19, oops, that's on the floor, a 25, a 30 and a 40. And I thought that would be very, very useful for sleeves. Excuse me. Um, and they do have like the connectors and what have you. So I bought those to try. And they're in this little PVC case. Come off. Sorry, there's a bit of thread on there. I can't get it. Little strap. I thought they were quite good value. And then this set was a little more expensive. I think this might have been 26. And this is clearly a rip-off of um, the Mindful Needles or there's another company that makes them with the swivel cords. So it's come with various lengths of swivel cords. And this one... They both go from 3mm to 6mm, so the sizes I use most are probably from 4.5 down. But yeah, I got those to try. They are metal. And again, they came in a really nice little case, so I'll see how I get on with them. I hoped 
by now to have tried them to be able to say to you these are brilliant or these are absolute rubbish they broke the first time I put them anywhere near any yarn but I don't know I haven't had a chance to try them out yet I haven't knit anything that they're suitable to use on but I will be doing I could have a go at the sleeves on the cardigan couldn't I um the other thing I said I would I would tell you was a poppy update poppy basically remains the same as I told you last week um she's still eating well she's still wandering about getting a little bit stronger I think um she had a bath yesterday now ordinarily I do not recommend bathing cats shouldn't really bath any animal unnecessarily because their their coats and their skins are designed to take care of themselves but Poppy while she's been so poorly hasn't been grooming herself properly and so she's needed a couple of baths just to give her a bit of a hand um, and her fur where she'd just been laying in her bed all the time her fur had become quite matted and with a special shampoo we've managed to unmat her now ordinarily trying to bath a cat is going to end up in probably skin grafts maybe the loss of a limb but Poppy actually enjoys a bath we all know she's not really a cat she thinks she's a dog so we only put a little bit of water in the bath just really enough to cover her feet um, nice warm water and she will lay in it quite happily the little bit of video that I've shown you is um, we've got a corner bath with a little shelf that the children used to love to sit on when they were small well Poppy Dave lifted her up out of the soapy water and put her on the shelf so that he could pour some jugs to rinse her fur and that's the bit of video that I've taken and you will see that she looks really bright and she's looking around she's not stressed she's perfectly happy there having a little rinse so I've got that bit of video for you but also I thought I'm going to put in a photograph here this is Poppy demanding cheese this is another indication that she is feeling quite a bit better we have to remember that we still don't know what's wrong with her. We may never know what's wrong with her. The vet suspects it may be something genetic, but we don't know. Um, he's basing that on the fact that of a litter of four kittens, two died within the first couple of days. Poppy and Rocket were left. Rocket had a sudden mystery illness last year that he recovered from quite quickly. Um, and this year it's Poppy's turn. So he's inclined to think that there's something wrong at a genetic level, which we maybe can't do anything about, but we can give her palliative care, which is what we're doing at the moment. And touch wood, it seems to be working and we are getting our poppy back slowly. So I'm going to say see you later now and I'm going to leave you with a little video of Miss Poppins enjoying her bath like the queen she is. And I'll see you next week. Bye guys.